Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my very first holiday countdown video. I didn't have any intentions when I started this holiday season of doing any sort of a countdown, but I was running a little bit behind on holiday tutorials. So I figured it would be better just to put them all out at once. Um, and I took some inspo from my friend Mal by Made by Manny and Mel, and I just decided that we were gonna go with a full-blown countdown. So here's the first video. So we're gonna work on this rustic Highland Cow Tumbler, and we're gonna start out by spray painting the entire base of the cup red, and then we're gonna use this Cup Credo from Kami Page Boutique. I'm just marking the halfway point, just splitting my cup completely in half with a Sharpie, making sure to follow that along the bottom. Now I will tell you that I didn't end up splitting the bottom in half, so this is not relevant if you're not gonna split it in half. Um, I just ended up taping off the bottom and glittering the base of the tumbler instead of doing halfsies, so um, I didn't need to do all this extra work. But once we've got that marked off, I'm going to go in with Aline's Tacket and I'm going to put that on my tumbler, making sure there are no streaks on the cup when it's done. I'm gonna do my best to make sure there's no globby glue, um, that it's completely streak free because it will show through. We're gonna end up putting foil on this and if you have streaks or clumps of glue, it definitely does translate over top of the foil, you can see it because it's so thin. So just be cautious on how you're applying that. Once the glue is completely streak free and there are no globs of glue, I'm gonna hit that with my heat gun until the glue is completely clear. If there are any white spots of glue, that means the glue is not dried and your foil is not going to stick to the cup. Um, and then I would also be cautious when you're using your heat gun um, to make sure that you don't get it too close to the glue because it will bubble up and that does show underneath the foil as well. So just be cautious of that. And then once your glue is completely clear, we're gonna go in with this red flake foil from Woody's Goodies. And I'm gonna do two coats of this. So we're gonna follow the same process. We're just gonna basically burnish this foil into the tacket glue. And then once that is completely smooth and flat on the cup, I'm gonna put another coat of the tacket. Same process, we're gonna make sure it's streak free. There is no white spots on the glue after you put the heat gun on it. And then we're gonna put the foils over as a second coat again, just to make sure that you can't see that spray paint underneath. After the foil's been completely smoothed down, I'm gonna go over it with a chip brush just to make sure that there's not any stray glitters in the paint portion of this, that there's nothing sticking up or that will stick up once we apply the glue. And then we can immediately go in with the sealant. I'm just going in with this Crystalac glitter glue. I ended up just putting it all over the entire tumbler because sometimes, um, epoxy will repel spray paint so I didn't even want to bother with that I just covered the glitter I'm sorry not the glitter the foil and then I went over spray paint let that air dry for probably two hours or so um, and then once that was done we're gonna move into our next steps So I went ahead and put just one coat of Flynn Sisters Artist Cure Resin over top of the foil and the paint section. And then I cut my printed vinyl in half. Uh, I measured the obviously paint half of the cup and cut the vinyl to size. This is from Gracefully Created. I will link the vinyl and the decal in the description box below for you guys. And then of course, we're gonna use my favorite method to apply the vinyl, which is the hinge method. We're just going to cut about an inch of the backing off, use it to adhere it to the cup. When we have it in position, we'll pull the backing just a little bit and then basically just rub the vinyl onto the cup while simultaneously pushing the backing off of the cup. It's pretty flawless. 
uh, every time that I apply the vinyl, very minimal bubbles, and I basically just have to work the top and bottom and get the vinyl trimmed up and it's all good. I'm gonna trim off that excess on the bottom to ensure that my cup is laying flat when I put it on my cup edging tool. I got this from Amazon and I'm gonna go over the top and bottom rim of the vinyl just to ensure that there's an even gapping between the top and the bottom sections. Peel away any of the excess vinyl and then we're gonna go into the distressing portion. Next, I'm gonna take my painter's tape and I'm going to line it up against the vinyl that we had just laid down, making sure that the tape is on the vinyl side, not on the foil side. We want the foil completely exposed. We're gonna go along vertically and then we're gonna go along the top and bottom horizontally as well to make sure we've got that clean cut line. So we're basically just gonna outline the vinyl to make sure we don't get any paint or glue when we go in with our crackle. And then once that's done, we're gonna take some Elmer's glue. You can use clear or white, they do both work the same. And then we're gonna take some acrylic paint. We're gonna mix up a little bit of ivory and a little bit of white to give it just that little off-white off color to Kind of give it more of a distressed look. I think pure white doesn't always look the best when you're going for a distressed look, so I always kind of opt for an ivory or an off-white color um, to get that end result. I'm gonna dip my paintbrush in the Elmer's glue first and we're going to put it on top of the foil. Now, there are two different ways that you can do it. So the thicker your glue is applied, the bigger the cracks and the bigger the gaps that allow you to see the foil from underneath. And then the less glue that you use it's gonna give less of a crackle effect and you're not going to be able to see as much foil. So I really wanted to expose a lot of that red foil and kind of make it a focal point and stand out on this cup. So I went pretty heavy handed with this Elmer's glue application, making sure everything was completely covered. We don't want any lumps or bumps. And then I'm gonna use that same paintbrush and I'm gonna go into my ivory paint. Now, with this ivory paint, you really want to try and not go over your paint strokes more than once if you can help it. It tends to muddle up the glue into the paint and it doesn't always give the best crackle effect. So I know I went over them a couple of times, but I'm really light-handed when I do that just to not stir up that glue underneath. And then I'm gonna go in because I'm impatient with my heat gun and I'm going to help dry this and crackle it. I will tell you guys, if you get your heat gun too close to the paint, it will cause it to bubble up, especially if your paint and your glue is thick. So be light-handed with that. And then I just let it sit overnight to dry after I pull my tape. I just like to see the crackle effect and kind of see what um, size the cracks are, things like that. So you're welcome to just let it sit on a drying rack and dry on its own. If you're impatient like me, you can totally just hit it with a heat gun. Either way will work. So we're gonna let that sit and dry and then we're gonna go in and we are going to chip this with a popsicle stick. I would not recommend using any type of metal or sharp object. It will scratch the epoxy and then when you go in, 
and kind of clean up with your alcohol ink or your um, acetone, it's going to push that paint into the cracks or the scratches of the epoxy. And then when you epoxy over it with a regular coat of epoxy, you're gonna be able to see that paint stuck in the scratches. So I would go in with something like a popsicle stick that's not going to scratch that paint, chip away. And if you notice that your paint starts peeling too much, if you're peeling like say towards the top of the cup and it starts peeling up too much, take your popsicle stick and chip it towards the bottom of the cup. So it kind of just breaks off the paint and stops it from pulling. Um, you can do that or you can just kind of press down where you want it to stop with your um, popsicle stick and it will kind of break off that chip of paint. So we're gonna go in and get the desired look that we're going for. And then once that's done, I'm gonna put a coat of polycrylic over this. I'm very light-handed with the polycrylic because this is raw paint. If you do too many swipes on it, you're gonna end up kind of muddling that paint into um, the polycrylic, which we don't want because then it makes your tumbler look foggy. So uh, just heed warning and be careful with how much polycrylic you're using. Otherwise, you can go directly into epoxy. You're likely gonna have to put a second coat on to make sure it's smooth if you don't do polycrylic though. I did forget to mention to you guys the direction that you are swiping your paintbrush for both the glue and the paint is going to determine the way that your cracks crackle, if that makes sense. So I wanted for this one, I wanted it to be cracking vertically, so I went up and down the cup. If you want something more like shiplap crackle, I would go horizontally left to right on your cup, making sure that both the glue and the paint are crackled in the same direction each time. I applied another coat of Flynn Sisters Epoxy. You can use fast setting or regular for that. And then I taped off the top section and the bottom section where we used the a cup edging tool to obtain that straight line and I'm just gonna take some acrylic paint mixed in with some Mod Podge I'm using Mod Podge because it dries quicker uh, and I'm gonna put some glue along the top and bottom and then we're gonna use its pecan from peachy olive glitters just to kind of tie in that brown that you see in those Highland cows and we're gonna put that on the cup and immediately remove the tape after tapping off any excess. We're gonna let that sit and dry for a couple of hours and then we can either go in with polycrylic or spray sealer or glitter glue if you want, whatever is your preferred method. Once that glue and um, glitter has dried onto the cup. We're just going to seal that up to make sure none of that glitter migrates to any of our finished sections. And then once we've got all of that on there and sealed, you can either go in with another coat of epoxy if you feel it's necessary, or we can go in with the vinyl work. I will show you guys how I did this in the next steps. So after my glue was dry, I went in with a coat of Krylon Triple Thick Spray just to make sure all of the glitter was kind of in place for the first round of sealer before I went in with my polycrylic. So I sprayed just one coat of that on there and then I put some polycrylic on it once the spray sealer was dry. And while that was drying, the while the polycrylic was drying, I went in with some vinyl. This is just a brown metallic from Tech Wrap. And I cut that at 0 0.05 inches height by 11 and a half width. And then I went in with some ivory, which is going to be the bottom layer of this stripe on the cup. And I cut that at 0 0.09 inches by 11 and a half width. 
And I'm basically gonna layer these on the cup to do a double stripe between the two. This is gonna go vertically on the cup to kind of split the vinyl from the foils. And I'm going to put this on, I have not epoxied over the um, raw glitter at this point. Remember, it's just sealer. So I'm gonna put this vinyl on ivory first, and then I'm gonna go over it with that holographic brown. And I'm just gonna use that raw glitter edge to cut off the straight lines on the top and the bottom of the cup, and kind of use that as a guide to where I want the vinyl to end. So once I get this applied, both layers on both the left and the right side, I'm gonna put this on my turner and I'm gonna put another coat of polycrylic. This time I'm gonna put it all over the cup on the vinyl striping I just did. Keep in mind we're only doing the vertical sections because the horizontal sections will need to go directly over the exposed glitter. We need to put epoxy over that first so we don't see the bumps underneath. So I'm gonna layer those and put polycrylic over it to prevent the vinyl from lifting, from uh, to keep the glitter from moving again, just to be extra sure that nothing is gonna move, everything's gonna stay in place. Once that polycrylic air dries for about 30 minutes, I'm gonna go in with a third coat of epoxy and then we'll move into the rest of our vinyl work. At this point, we now have three coats of epoxy on this tumbler and the third coat is completely dry. So I'm gonna take my Dremel and I'm going to expose a fine line of stainless steel along the top rim of the cup to make sure that our final coat of epoxy has a good uh, adherence and it's not going to lift from the edges once our customer has it in their hands and cause air bubbles to get between uh, the stainless and the epoxy. So a good seal is very important for tumblers, longevity. Um, so I would definitely recommend doing that. And then we're just gonna buff out any of the bumpy edges on the bottom as well. I will tell you that the um, Tipsy Magnolia tumblers, they are pretty, I wanna say sharp, but not really. The edges aren't really rounded. They're kind of blunt. They're not, they're not sharp like to the touch or anything. Um, but I will tell you, if you're sanding at an angle like I'm showing you right here, um, chances are that you're going to sand right through that one coat of epoxy that is between your sander and the glitter, and you're going to sand right down to the stainless. So I recommend sanding at a flat surface, both on the top and vertically, um, and not at an angle on that sharp edge, just to make sure that everything stays intact. And then once we clean that up with the rubbing alcohol, we're gonna take this Highland Cow white back decal. This is also from Gracefully Created, and we're gonna use the hinge method to apply this. Now, I didn't trim up the clear. You don't have to, it doesn't show under epoxy. It does look like it will show once you apply it and the epoxy is not on, but as long as it's got um, good adherence to the cup, there's no air bubbles or anything like that, you're not gonna be able to see it under epoxy. So you don't have to trim it. That is just personal preference. And then I'm gonna take this element sheet. This is also from Gracefully Created. And I'm just gonna trim out what I think fits for the top and bottom corners. I just do the coordinating florals in 
opposite edges. So the top left and then the bottom right or the top right, bottom left, whatever. So they're basically offset from each other. And I'm gonna put that at an angle, trim off anything that is excess. At this point, we have not put on the brown vinyl horizontally on the top and the bottom of the cup to separate the glitter from the um, vinyl and foil sections. So we need to be cautious when we're applying these florals that it's not going to butt up over the horizontal vinyl that we still have to apply yet and then once we have the florals in place where we want them measured out i'm just going to take that same vinyl that i used in the vertical stripes apply that to the top and bottom of the cup and then we've got the florals that we're going to lay down and nope we've already laid down the florals what am i talking about um, and then once we've got that applied to the cup with the florals, I'm going to put this on my turner with another coat of polycrylic. I've told you guys many times before that holographic and metallic vinyls are notorious for lifting under epoxy, so I always go to polycrylic to just ensure that none of that vinyl work is going to lift and ruin the end result of the tumbler. So we'll put that on the tumbler, let it spin for about 30 minutes. When I use the holographic vinyls, I don't use my heat gun to dry my polycrylic because it does tend to bubble up the vinyl. Um, if you're very light handed with your heat gun, it probably won't affect it, but I just let it sit and dry on its own and work on something else while I'm waiting for that to finish drying. Um, and then once the polycrylic was completely dry, I went in with just one final coat of Flynn Sisters Artist Cure Resin. I did have a little bit of Bright from PGL Glitters on my hand from another cup, and it was intentional that I left it on there. I wanted to give the um, vinyl and the uh, foils just a little teeny tiny bit of sparkle without taking away from the foil being the focal point of the tumbler. So with that in mind, I just kept that on there, just the bare, bare minimum glitter, just to give it a little something extra. And then once that final coat was completely dry, this cup was all done. So let me know what you guys thought in the comments. I hope you enjoy day one of this Christmas holiday series, and I will see you guys again tomorrow.